Hey, if you've got a manufactured home like a double white, a single white, etc., and you want to get rid of these seams and change your wall look entirely, I'm going to show you how to do that right after this. All right, thanks for stopping by my channel here. My name is Guy Purcella. I'm a 35 year drywall pro. I've been doing this, I'm 59. I first started walking on stilts when I was eight years old. But I've been doing this a long time and I've, I've gotten rid of a lot of these modular home uh, looks. A lot of people want to update the look, but it's really hard because this is drywall that is covered with a vinyl. So it's not your ordinary wall. You can't strip this vinyl off of here so what do you do well i'm going to walk you through how i go about it now i will say that this is all a little bit um, iffy because we're working with this vinyl and it's not the ideal surface to put drywall mud over which is what we're going to do but i'm going to give you some pointers on how i've done it i've never had a customer call back and say it failed and i've probably done at least a dozen of them if not more and uh, there's a few tricks though that'll help you get a successful job out of this. And hey, if you like learning these kind of things, I've got over 150 videos out with many more plans. So be sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell notification. That way you get notified each time we put out a new video. You know, when you got these modular homes and, and manufactured homes, you always have a lot of this trim. It's kind of everywhere. A lot of times it's around the windows doors these seams and all this is is where the two sheets of drywall come together and like i say this comes from the factory with this vinyl adhered to it and you really just can't remove it so what you got to do is do something over the top now you got a couple options you could peel this off put a whole new layer of say quarter inch or half inch even drywall on here there's some drawbacks to that, like it's going to change the depth of everything on the wall, like your uh, thermostats, your outlets, switches, etc. And it changes door trim and all that. So that one's got its own complications. This is the easiest way. And what we're going to do is start by removing this trim. It's just held on by a bunch of staples, mostly, and some nails. So we're going to get out a couple of tools here. We're going to start with just this. I call it a wonder bar. It's a great little pry bar. It's got two ways to pry, some nail pulling options. And just start pulling the trim off. Now it comes off pretty easy once you get it started. Then you'll notice there's about 10,000 nails per square inch here. They're nails and staples. They're just kind of everywhere. So you want to go through and drive all these in. So you got to set them a little bit because there is no recess. Okay, now once you think you've got it pretty good, the next step is you want to check it because a lot of times I found that I didn't get them all like I thought. Here's how you check it. All right, to check it, I went and got my six inch knife. You can use a putty knife or whatever. Whatever you got handy, you want to just run it down here and listen for clicks. There's a minor one right there. Now you'll know when you hear it, it's got that metallic little click. And if it does that, you still got a high spot. So I know we got one just barely sticking out right here. Now, why is that important? Can't you just mud over it a little heavier? You don't want to do that. Anytime something sticks out, even like a 32nd of an inch, you'll have mud this wide trying to cover it and this long because it creates, you got to go a little bit more than that. So you're going to end up putting it on about a 16th of an inch. And that's quite a bit of mud actually. And there's just no point in it. So just go ahead and drive them all smooth. Then the next step is to check for tightness. Okay, if you can see this here, it's kind of zoomed in, but right here, if I push on that, that sheet is moving. 
Now, if you just fix this like it is, it's probably going to crack. So it's just not really tight. So what you want to do is take a cordless drill driver, or in this case, I've got a drywall screw gun and just re-secure it. Usually you want to put them about every eight to 12 inches. Depends kind of how loose it is. But the basics are you just want this head slightly below the surface, but not too much. If you go too much, you tear the paper and it loses all its strength. If you don't go enough, like I did right here. If you don't go far enough, you'll when you go to mud it, you'll get a little click and it'll stick up through your mud and cause you a little bit of problem. So you want to set it at the right depth. I would recommend getting one of them dimplers, like in this picture. That'll help you set it better without going too deep. Okay, then normally what I do to fix these is I go through and tape them like any new drywall. You want to uh, use mesh tape and hot mud. If you use mesh tape, don't use regular joint compound. You got to use hot mud, which is fast setting joint compound, like in this picture here. You can use paper tape and regular, uh, regular weight all purpose. Don't use the light weight. It's paper tape and regular weight because it has more glue or hot mud and mesh tape. I like hot mud and mesh tape because hot mud shrinks less, sets up quicker, allows you to put a second coat on quicker. Um, so normally you would just go through and tape it and then coat it and float it. Now on this job, she wanted to be on a tight budget, so we're going to try a brand new product. And I've done a little experimenting on this job already and it seems to be working well. And that product is one that was sent to me by the inventor of it. It's called Tape in Mud. So it's a tapeless drywall mud. And I've got another video where I've talked about it a little bit. I'll show you when I go to mix it up. It's basically chopped up little fibers. I think there's some fiberglass and some other materials in there. He's experimented with this for like 10 years. And I think he's offering it for sale soon. I'm not totally sure if it's for sale yet. I'll put a link to his website down below though. And basically this is kind of like putting fibers in concrete. If you've ever heard of when they pour concrete, they normally have to put rebar in it. The rebar resists the breakage of the concrete. It resists it pulling apart and cracking. And this does basically the same thing. They have a different product in the concrete, but basically it's a fiber product in their long fibers. And I think it's not quite as strong as concrete with rebar, but I've had a, a shop that was poured that way and I had no problems with it. So it makes sense and this is going to save a lot of money because we don't need this joint tape to use this product. And like I say, I came up here and I worked on her house one day already and did a day's worth of repairs like that. And I've come back about three weeks later and only one of them is cracked and that's because it was moving and I should have screwed it down. I didn't catch that. So we'll do that next. Okay, now that we got all this tacked down with some screws. Uh, we're ready to mud it. So I'd go ahead and do that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 45 minute fast setting joint compound. I've got a lot to do through this house so I'm in no rush but I like it because it doesn't shrink like I said and it's going to stick really well and it works really well with this product that we're going to use. Now if you are just doing it a little bit you could go with 20 minute but only if you're like a pro really experienced. If you're a novice, I would never use faster than 20 minutes unless you're mixing up a tiny little bit or it'll bite you. It'll start setting up in your pan. So now everything I got is right down here. So I'm just going to show you what I do. I got a lot to do to the whole house, like I say. So I'm going to add for my 14 inch pan, I'm going to add a full cup of this and I'll probably even have to add some more. That was about 24 ounces of water. And then I've got my hot mud in this bucket. so. You just add it in there until the water almost disappears. You'll see a little bit of water coming up on the sides and then try mixing it. Usually that'll get you pretty close. If it's too thick or too um, thin, you can always adjust it. But I would recommend that you add this before the powder because I found that if you're mixing up a big pan, this tends to be, it's so fluffy, tends to fall over the edges and out of your pan. So let me show you, you can see it's just a 
fluffy powdery looking stuff i'll show you a close-up on the screen here we're just going to add i don't know there's an exact ratio for this i like to add quite a bit for this purpose so i'm adding about a handful to a whole pan of mud maybe a little bit more okay so i already added this to it like i said and then i started adding the powder and it's going to be kind of hard to show you but just add until like most of it went away there's a little water popping up at the ends usually i like to mix it with this egg beater in a drill works really well for these powdered things just make sure you're on your slowest speed or it will fly everywhere start out a little slow and it sounds like you just mixed up a batch of brownies don't go get your wife's egg beater go down to the thrift store and get you a 99 cent egg beater that's all you need and that quick it's clean okay now the way this comes from the factory like i said it really doesn't have a recessed edge so we're not trying to fill much and we don't need to put a big hump on here if you do the joint tape you're going to have to coat it whiter so with this method i've been doing this through this house so far and it's working pretty good i just put it on with a six inch knife and then I kind of lay my knife down see the more you stand your knife up the more you'll wipe off let's see if this is showing here so that'll wipe it off tight if you want to leave a little behind lay your knife down and push harder it'll spread it out more so you could go down and feather these edges and then and by feathering we tilt and push and pull and that gives that feathered edge then lay our knife down quite a bit and come down through here like that. Now we've left just a decent little coating on here. We didn't get it too thin because in order for this to have it's a decent amount of strength, it really should have a little bit of thickness on it. So we'll do the same thing down here. Now I am going to come back and put a second coat on with regular all-purpose mud. I'm going to use the regular green label all purpose because it has more glue in it and I'm not sure how well drywall mud sticks to this vinyl. So I'm going to go ahead and use that so that it makes sure it sticks a little better. So that's it for the first coat. We'll come back after this sets up, put a second coat on, and then we've got to create a little bit of texture and I'll show you why. This vinyl is not silky smooth. It actually has a grain to it. So I'm going to experiment with sanding it and I'm going to have to sand all these repairs in a straight down vertical motion to match the grain. Otherwise you're going to have all these shiny spots everywhere you did that repair. So if you do have any kind of texture, try and match it. Okay, now this is dried completely. You can see that it filled in nicely and here's a close up of what that looks like. There is a little bit of shrinkage. You always get a little shrinkage. And then uh, what you want to do next is kind of like any other finishing. You want to brush sand this. And the purpose of that is to take off any ridges that you might have left, which could be a lap mark. Or sometimes you just get little, basically, splatters, goobers. And you don't want any of that on there. So you're not trying to sand it flat unless you put it on too heavy, which you shouldn't do. So what you want to do is brush sand it with like a pole sander is ideal and I'll show you some alternatives. The reason this is ideal is because it's very flat. This is very flat. It has a little bit of foam right in there. So it's got a little bit of give to it. So it's not, if it was too hard, it would actually dig edges in all the time. So this flatness will allow you to flatten things out better. Whereas if you use a sanding sponge, it tends to follow the contours it's too soft and flexible and so if you've got a little hump it will just follow it it'll smooth it out but it won't flatten it so this that's why this is better 
Another option would be, this is a cheaper method, a hand sander. If you're just doing a little bit, these will work great. And run them kind of sideways, even these. If you run any sander like this, that edge will leave grooves in what you're sanding. So just brush sand it. So do it with a pole real quickly, really. Like that is about all you need. Again, if you didn't put it on too heavy, knock off the dust, then we're ready to coat it. Okay, and for this final coat, we're going to use just regular all-purpose. This is the heavyweight version because it has more glue in it. And this vinyl, I don't know how well mud, regular uh, lightweight would stick to this. It doesn't have as much glue. So be safe. I'm going to use this and a 12-inch knife. Now, I've showed you in other videos how to properly hold your knife and coat these but I'm going to show you here because 95% of my viewers are not subscribers. So what you want to do is load your mud up about like so. A pretty decent amount on there. You could put more but you might drip. You don't want to be dripping so the mud is not thinned down. Coming out of the bucket it's a little bit thin so I left it just the way it was. The lightweight mud will often thin it down. So you start with your knife on the wall at an angle about like this and then as you go down I'm going to show you with no mud as you go down you start tilting your blade over and that helps spread it out now you do have to put a decent amount of force on here if you go too light if you don't push hard enough you'll get something that kind of happens like that it's like you're doing a skip trial so you actually have to push fairly firmly and the more you lean your knife over the more mud you put on there now if you get a scratch like that just dig the little booger out and go over it again so let's start from the beginning and I'm gonna give you a close-up view okay I got my GoPro up close here hopefully this is the first time I've used that so hopefully this works out okay so normally I do this fairly quickly So let me go ahead and slow that down. I'll do it one more time. And as you go down, you see I'm leaning my hand over and I'm pushing fairly firmly. And that puts a pretty even coat on. And your next step is to feather these edges. And then we don't want to leave a lot on here. On these joints, because they really aren't recessed, we don't want to put a lot of mud on here. We're just trying to get enough to cover those little edges that want to pop through. And if you happen to have a hump, and you can tell by putting your knife on here, and you're going to leave it smooth, and the lighting is going to come at an angle down the wall, you might want to actually float it out like a butt joint. I've got a separate video on that. I'll put that link up here, and I'll try and put that in the description down below. But for this, we just want a thin... A fairly thin coat down the middle so again wiping it down put pretty decent pressure and lay your knife down at a fairly steep angle and just go over it now there's still a little bit too much mud on there and there's a lot of bubbles and that happens because this is not porous when you go over raw drywall mud it doesn't bubble as much so to take more off we just want to do the same thing and every time you go over it, it takes a little bit more off. Now I'm going to show you a close up here, but I think that's right where we want it. We got a decent little coat. So that's basically it. Now, if it pops through again, anything shows through again, you might have to put a third coat on. Then the final step is basically just to sand it to prep for texture. If you're going to do a texture, you can do texture right over the wall. Again, use a all purpose regular weight sticks better now you can do most any texture of this a spray texture orange peel knocked down you can do skip trials whatever you want you can do a mediterranean style the rougher this comes out overall the more i would advise going with a texture and the heavier the texture the better it covers but it won't cover everything and then after you sanded it and chose to texture it then what you want to do is spot prime the repair and then it's best to come back and put a coat of paint on the repair 
all the repairs all through the house and then paint the whole wall afterwards that brings that up to the same um, porosity basically by putting a primer coat and a coat of paint and you'll get a more even sheen across here otherwise it'll flash and stand out where every one of these repairs are and we don't want that i'm also going to roll this with like a half inch nap to try and get a little extra stipple into the paint so that it helps disguise the difference between these things and changes the look here we want it to look like a regular painted wall this has this grain to it so it helps hold the mud it gives it mud something to bite to and the paint now otherwise i would recommend putting a high bond primer on here just ask at your local hardware store and they can tell you what you need or paint store would be better and then after you put all that primer on then go ahead and paint it with regular paint so hey there's some more videos popping up here and you might want to click on one of those they could help you out too i would really really appreciate comments down below even if you just say hi it helps my video get promoted better by youtube and a thumbs up and a subscription and i look forward to seeing you guys on the next video Take care, everybody.